Let's take a look at one of the most annoying things that happens when you're TIG welding stainless steel. Traveling along, feeding the filler material in, the filler material gets stuck. Absolutely infuriating. Having your TIG rod stick in the weld pool is gonna pull on your piece. It's gonna unfortunately cause you to wreck your pass. Definitely gonna wreck your tungsten. Why does it happen? Don't worry, I got a solution that might help you out. I've taught a lot of people to TIG weld stainless steel. It's tedious, it has a ton of small variables you have to learn, and it can cause all kinds of annoying stuff like this to happen. The reason that this happens is typically because of an inaccuracy of how your filler material is put into the weld pool. Take a look at this right here. Here, we can clearly see the weld pool. There is going to be a sweet spot where your filler material is going to break off into the weld pool easiest. When it does so, it's gonna go in as smoothly as possible. What is happening when your rod gets stuck is the material is being fed in at this area here. So you can see, compared to the sweet spot about here, in this case here, it's being fed too close to the leading edge of the puddle. What is happening here is your filler material is not breaking off cleanly and smoothly into the weld pool. It's only partially melting and it's sticking to the leading edge of the puddle. What you wanna do is make sure that you feed directly or specifically into the sweet spot of the weld pool. So if we take a look at this diagram here, we can see that there is the leading edge of the puddle marked out here. We can see the other area I mark out here is directly in the center underneath the tungsten. The sweet spot for feeding your filler material in is gonna be right in between these two points here. So here we're just traveling along with a flat pass. You can see I hit it with the filler material right at that sweet spot at the start and wait for the filler material to sit down. Fill and chill. Once I start moving, you can see I am trying to hit that sweet spot as accurately as possible. This is 1.6 millimeter filler rod or 1 16th of an inch. Really thin stuff, so this puddle is really small. Every time I hit it, I'm making sure I'm aiming directly for that area. You can see my filler rod is approximately 90 degrees from my tungsten or torch angle, which makes it a lot easier to hit this sweet spot. I'm traveling along like so, all I'm doing is making sure I maintain proper standoff distance, staying in nice and close, and I don't feed too close to the leading edge of the puddle. Another thing that can happen is somebody commonly will feed to the center of the weld pool. What happens at this point is somebody's gonna pull back to make room for that filler material, which in turn increases the standoff distance. Obviously we wanna avoid doing that. When this happens excessively, we can start to see the tip of our filler material start to burn off. It's gonna be way more difficult to put into the weld pool. All right, so here's a great example of what's gonna happen when you begin to feed to the center of the puddle and you pull back with your standoff distance. Pulling off with your standoff distance creates a more unstable arc that is most likely gonna arc to your filler rod itself. You're gonna blow the end of your filler rod off. Blowing the end of your filler rod off is gonna be really tricky to get into the weld pool properly. And if you do manage to do so, it's just gonna fall into the center of the puddle. It's not gonna blend into the parent material as well. So just a great look of what's gonna happen when you pull your standoff distance back because you're feeding to the center of the puddle. So you can now see that feeding to the leading edge of your puddle can give you problems and feeding to the center of your puddle can also give you different problems. Both of these things are gonna give you problems with the quality and ease that your filler material goes into the weld puddle. Here we can see I'm working on a fillet weld. Doing a fillet weld is definitely a lot trickier to get the filler rod to hit the exact sweet spot we need. However, if you can see clearly and you're set up comfortably and you're really watching to make sure this detail goes in okay, you can usually hit the sweet spot as long as you're looking for it. Now, another really important thing. As we wanna focus on putting the filler material into the weld pool, we also want to remove it just as smoothly. Somebody can take the time and effort to put things in as perfectly as possible, but if somebody drags the filler material out of the weld pool at an angle that contacts the edge of the puddle, it's gonna stick here as well. So you can see, even though the filler rod is going in pretty cleanly, you can see it is dragging out. This can lead to little flecks of filler material out of the puddle off to the side. This is known as filler drag, but it can also get stuck on the leading edge of the puddle. This is the problem that we're dealing with here. You can see my filler rod angle compared to my tungsten or torch angle is over 90 degrees. This is an excessive angle which makes it much easier for the filler rod to stick. You wanna make sure when you're feeding filler material, you get in as cleanly as possible and you get out as cleanly as possible. There are a lot of small details to pay attention to when learning to TIG weld stainless steel. A lot of them can keep you stuck for a long time too. This episode here is gonna go over another really important detail that I go over with all of my students when teaching them how to TIG weld. So check out that episode next. If you're learning, that one's gonna keep you moving nicely. Go out today, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. For Pacific Arc TIG welding, my name is Dusty. Bill and chill, we will talk soon. Peace.